histórico. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024 here in Sin City, Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and analyst, Dave Vellante. We've got two great guests for this next segment. We have Pradeep Kumar, he is the SVP Technology Services at UiPath. Welcome back, Pradeep. Thanks, Rebecca. And Bronwyn Hastings, he is the SVP Global Partners at UiPath, both in pink. It's, you coordinated, it looks amazing. Well, he coordinated the <laughs> field, exactly. All does. <laughs> So Pradeep, you, you're a longtime friend of theCUBE, a many time CUBE alum, it's great to have you back. Uh, used to be, of course, with HP, now you're wearing a new uniform, I should say. Yeah. Um, we're talking today about this evolving company strategy. We heard Daniel Dinez say on the main stage that we're really, we're starting act two of mm -hmm. UiPath. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what that means for the partner ecosystem. Talk a little bit about this pivot and what it means for your organization. Yeah, I think um, as Daniel said, we've, we've done the act one, now we are getting into act two using generative AI and automation platform. I think when it comes to the partner ecosystem, I think making sure the partners are trained, skilled, understand uh, what the customer issues are and how to get there in a new way, right? And we need to lead them, and I lead the services organization, so I have a responsibility to take the partners on this journey. And some of these things are not identified yet. I think it's known versus the unknown. The unknown is difficult, right? It's easy to say to somebody, hey, this is the plan, this is your, <laughs> you're going through a, a you know, university graduate system versus there are lots of things unknown that we need to build together. As Daniel pointed out, there are lots of things that customers would want that we don't even know, right? So it would be a journey and how does Braun and me take our partners on this journey would be the biggest challenge we are going to have. Braun, what makes a great partner? Obviously, they can measure with the, by how much you sell. Okay, but, but what are the salient aspects that contribute to that successful partnership? I think what we're looking for are partners that have actually really lent in and getting that knowledge base that's going to allow us to go to the future. We've got a lot of partners that are really grounded in RPA at the moment and they've had a very successful approach of being able to take a company's business and automate it. But right now, when you look at the vision and what they're seeing as an exciting opportunity, there's a little bit of apprehension with these partners because now they've got to build a whole new skill set. So what makes a good partner right now are ones that are actually looking at that vision and leaning into the knowledge sets that are required to move them forward to actually capture the opportunity that's there. So that's one. I think the second one is meeting the customer where they are on this journey. Um, it, customers are in all sorts of places right now. You know, with generative AI, they've had to deal with things that they don't quite know how to apply yet. So how do our partner base meet a customer where they are, but have enough of the knowledge set to actually walk them through and be their advisor to that direction. So there's a lot in the partner base right now that they're maybe a little bit apprehensive about too. So it's multi-dimensional. There's the yeah. automation, like how to do automation right. Yeah. There's also industry expertise Correct. and sort of tribal knowledge. Correct. Um, Thank you. And it seems like maybe it's not products per se that come out of it, but certainly templates that you can apply yeah. within industry. Uh, and is that kind of, are, those, are there patterns that you're seeing that can help assuage some of the, the caution uh, or trepidation um, that has shown the early signs of success? Yeah, I think the, 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 it's an interesting question, the patterns. Um, I think, you know, what they look at is, um, are there places, whether it's industry, whether it's trends they're seeing, that we can formulate responses for, that actually, uh, my partner in crime over here, and with the <laughs> services organization, can we actually come alongside them and help them envision that, yeah. make sure that they're answering the customer's question, and actually make it sure that it's, a, 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 I'd call it assured, that it's actually safe, 
in the way that they're looking at it. So um, with Pradeep, we're actually doing a lot of things called assurance services to help take that trepidation away from the partner, one. The second thing is looking for those trends and patterns and really getting tangible outcome-based solutions with the partners, building those assets that actually allow them to see some repeatability. So we, we've brought something called an innovation fund, AI innovation fund to bear. Partners can tap into it, but the essence of that is, okay, we can see a trend, we'll come alongside you, we'll help you innovate for a customer, but now you can see customer two, three, and four behind it that allows you to bring that repeatability of confidence and that assurance to the table. So it's an interesting time. Mm. And so I know we're talking about automation, but of course this is really about people. Yeah. And and I'm curious, Pradeep, if you can talk a little bit about how you're securing the right technical aptitudes in terms of certifications and, and what you make of the skills gap, which we hear maybe a little less about as, as, as AI is taking over more and more, but but how how you see that right now in terms yeah, of Yeah, no. Um, Really good question, because I think this is not technology alone, right? Majority is transformation, processes which requires people, and people's knowledge, as you say. And because the journey is different to a basic RPA, the skill set that requires in the whole workflow is different from different areas, and also it could be different by industry and different by what customers are trying to do, right? So it's not the same skill set that could go in an elongated way. You may need different skills at different points of the cycle of this journey. And that is tricky. So starting with, you know, the big, big SIs, big Accentures of the world to all the way down to uh, little players, are grappling with how to have the skill set and how to train them, right? And what we are doing from a UI path point of view is really understanding that. And one of the things we are doing is we have brought in the skill set into one place where we used to have partner enablement versus internal enablement. We have now combined the two because we want to go at the same speed as we are training our folks, say for example, Agentic, we want to make sure when we are training our folks, we are training our partners people at the same time. And not all the partners would be able to scale in this game, right? And some will be, you know, will stay behind and some will take the journey and go faster. So we are trying to train them uh, at the same speed and also as Braun said, we're trying to give them some delivery assurance, right? Uh, because customers will want to find out whether their partner they have picked have got the right skills to deliver this. And it's sort of the underwriting behind it. Okay, because the partner may not have all the skills required in the journey, but we will underpin them, augment with our skills to make sure the journey is very clear. You would mean not one person is going to have all the skills in this game. So Daniel talked about Act Two. Yeah. And, and on our kickoff, I, I said, well, Act One was RPA. There was a 1A, <laughs> and then now we're into Act Two. And so RPA was pretty straightforward. Yeah. It was actually uh, pretty profound at the time. We have, yeah. we have software robots doing the mundane work of humans. Yes. And you know, while there was some concern about losing jobs, people quickly realized, I love my software robots. This is, a, yeah. this is wonderful. And then the Act 1A, I would call hyper automation. Yeah. Got a little buzzy. And then, but you, you brought some real to it with, okay, they are talking about end to end. We're going to bring in process automation and yeah. process mining. And so it's centers of excellence. And so people start to say, okay, I get this. We're now going to scale, go beyond point product. How do you educate the partner ecosystem such that agentic isn't just a buzzword? So I think that um, the way that, and I loved Daniel's slide from this morning, and I'm not sure whether you saw it. It says, these are the things that are addressed by RPA. These are the things that are addressed by IDP. These are the things that are addressed by agentic. We almost need to break it down into those components. 
Um, the first thing is making sure that we understand the pieces of the puzzle we are educating in, but giving them a true learning journey that builds the puzzle pieces together into almost that layer of agentic automation and how it comes together. So that's one. The second is what Pradeep said is, um, as we're learning, we're doubling down on learning alongside of. And that's what uh, Pradeep was describing, learning alongside of, as we're getting these use cases, we're experiencing customers, we're actually bringing partners alongside us making sure that they're gaining the skills along the way. Um, and then the third thing is we're doing things like immersion labs, you know, bringing the true um, use cases that customers are experiencing and giving the partners the chance to be immersed, to be part of understanding how these puzzle pieces to come together. Um, adding advisory services in this where we're getting customer direct feedback, partner direct feedback. So it's almost a continuous learning environment that we're going through right now. Um, and then it's also really being close on these initial customer um, scenarios where the customers are saying, where are they getting value and building it back into. So it's a journey. It's definitely a learning journey. Um, doubling down with Pradeep to make sure that we're present with the partners. Um, but also bringing some of the knowledge sets and the partners of what they're seeing because we've made announcements with different partnership types, whether it's our recent one we made with SAP and we're now a solution extension with them as part of their architectural footprint and now teaching our, our channels how to be part of um, an ERP world or an SAP world when you're doing these sorts of automations and intelligent automation, or whether it's with Microsoft, or when we're doing some of our orchestration. It's opening up this aperture to really help partners see what the opportunity is, but educate them in the opportunity that try and tr trying to address. So there's a lot going on, mm. to be honest, in, in all the, the partner community. But I would add, Dave, I think, honestly, we none of us know exactly where this is going to end or what we exactly require, right? So it's a journey and then we are going through the journey. I think from a world point of view, I think there's a lot of things that has that is coming together. LLM models are yeah. much more specialized and much more accurate. And we, from our point, the automation, as you said, on the structured areas, yeah. uh, the use cases have been really done well. So right. the accuracy and the speed is really good. And now with you know generative AI, it all comes together into a place, right? And as far as we be very logical in what the outcome that we want to achieve end to end, including very complex processes, then we are going to be winning. And that may be different from customer to customer and process to process, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's a reality. Makes and so some partners may concentrate in certain areas, right? right? I think before we started, you talked about like IBM, you know, like Arwind was talking about, you know, customer service or support. Right. It's the first thing that ripe for change. And he is right, right? So. Those are the areas, and we have a, you know, big thing to play in that area, right? Yeah, contact center is a great use. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. very much so. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. well, I mean, as you said when we first started talking here, you're giving customers maybe what they don't, what they want, yeah. but maybe what they don't even know they want. Absolutely. And so I'm curious to hear how you balance that need for innovation with the fact that as you both pointed out, customers are at different points Point. in this journey with also, of course, the necessity of having good security, good governance, yep. um, responsible AI. How do, you, how do you manage that? Yeah, it's a tricky one, Rebecca, right? And that's why we have a professional services organization within UiPath, although we have a huge partner ecosystem. Because what we want to make sure is when the product teams, Graham develops something, we take it to customers and learn out of that experience, get the feedback, and it's an agile way of continuously changing. So when we have made a mistake, I think this is where Daniel is very good. Hey, I made an assumption that did not work and I want to change track. I think being us being a very nimble, humble organization and a very quick to change organization, I think 
we are able to take that feedback from the customer, Rebecca, and then quickly change the thread into where we want to go. And that is mightily important. I, I don't think anybody can develop because they don't know where the park is going to go. So, excellent. Awesome. Well, Ethan Bronwyn, thank yeah. you both so much for coming on theCUBE. A real pleasure having you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward 2024. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.